What are you gonna do with that guitar? You know, that, that, that prop. And she's like, well, I'm just gonna bring it back to Savers. I'm um, like, I'll give you 15 bucks for it. This is a hundred year old guitar. And this is a sticker that says it's from Savers. All right, I haven't done one of these in a while. This is the whole shop side part of my YouTube videos. And this guitar has a really cool story. Before I get into all of that, I just should talk about quickly what the heck this guitar is um, and uh, a little bit about what I did to it to get it up to snuff. Stick around for the end. I will play you something to give you, you know, an idea of what these things can sound like. They are ladder brace guitars, different than X braced. It's a lakeside, which is essentially a Line and Healy guitar. Line and Healy is a, is a pretty well-known company out of Chicago. They, they started actually as a sheet music shop in 1864. They're mostly known today uh, making harps, and they still make harps today. But at the end of the 19th century, they were making pianos, guitars, mandolins, banjos, ukuleles. And they had a bunch of different markers for some of their guitars. So Line and Healy, Washburn, Arian would be one. I have one of those. Information is actually kind of hard to dig up about this company because of the Great Chicago Fire into the 1800s. Stuff was written down on paper then, you know, a lot was lost. From what I can dig up online, Lakeside would have been a model put out by Line and Healy. Uh, I'd love to learn more about it because it is hard to find stuff. I did just order this book. But if anyone does have more information and uh, maybe some access to early patent docs, um, leave a note in the comments. I'd love to see it. So there is an amazing story about how I found this guitar. But before we get into that, I'll talk a little bit about this guitar and uh, some of the work that I did to get this thing up, up to snuff. All right, so the work I had to do on this guitar was uh, neck reset, set the neck angle, uh, resurface the board, and um, new frets, uh, put on new binding I tried to make it look kind of old. Probably the biggest amount of work though was the bridge. Um, a, lot, a lot of these old guitars didn't have what's called compensated saddles. Now, it's because these fixed bridges, as we know it, were apparently intended for gut. And they did have guitars with steel strings um, for sure, but those would have been the ones with the tailpiece and the movable bridge so you could slant and intonate them if you even cared. But either way, this transitionary time, the bridges weren't intonated. And so what you often have to do is you fill the old slot and then plane that flat and then re-slot it. The risk you take when you do that is you just brought that treble side slot that much closer to the end and I broke it. I did. I broke it when I was fitting the saddle and uh, it's kind of trashed at that point. I mean you can glue it back together which I of course tried and um, it just cracked again. I'd already gone through all the work of refitting the bridge. I don't know, I came up with this idea that I haven't seen done that uh, we'll see how it does, but but I just capped the front of the bridge. So I'll show you some picks here. So I had surfaced the bottom of that cap to fit the top of the guitar, glued it in place, and then just uh, shaped it to perfectly match the existing bridge. And uh, you can kind of see it that I did it, um, but you kind of can't either. So, you know, I didn't want to throw away the piece of ebony. You know, this whole project, my motivation um, for this in particular, but a lot of guitar projects is just to kind of um, do away with this disposable American culture. These things were not meant to be thrown away. You know, they were meant to be passed through the generations and played and fixed. Same thing with this ebony, you know. If I can fix it, why throw it away? Uh, so the story of this guitar, I'll tell it to you real quick. So, uh, playing a gig, playing a dance. I play for square dances. I was playing fiddle that night, and I was at a school. And some student's mom had uh, decorated the school to look like a barn dance. And there's hay bales and skillets and this guitar as a stage prop on stage. I didn't know that, but uh, my pal's up there playing his big dreadnought and beside him is this small bodied parlor guitar and I knew what it was right away. I mean, I didn't know exactly what it was, but I knew it was a turn of the century parlor guitar. I'm like, dude, you got a parlor? And he like looks down and he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, that guitar? And he's like, that? I don't know what that is. That's like a toy. I don't know, that's a prop. 
That's not a prop, man. And that's what I noticed. I see the Saver sticker, $12.99. I'm like, oh my God, what is she gonna do with this guitar? Is she gonna keep it? Does she even know what it is? Is she gonna bring it back to Savers? So the three hour gig's over and I'm trying to keep my cool and you know, we're cleaning up and I'm like, hey, what are you gonna do with that guitar? You know, that, that, that prop. And she's like, well, I'm just gonna bring it back to Savers. I'm like, I'll give you 15 bucks for it. She's like, okay, sold. I didn't have any cash. I had to like write a check for $15. Anyway, uh, I got it and um, freaked out. I was freaking out. The catalog instrument of today is just a, a, a way lower class. They are meant to fall apart, you know. They can be fixed, um, but often it's just like, ah, maybe not worth it, you know. And it, it's hard to make that judgment call, but these, on the other hand, are made with old growth wood and uh, hand carved, and they were like $17. I don't know. That's crazy. I will look up the inflation difference of what $17 means today, um, and that'll be interesting to know. We're keeping this one. This is the lakeside. Uh, Lion and Healy, and I'll play a little something here to give you an idea of what these guitars sound like. And stick around for what's next. I just got to 1,000 subscribers on this little channel, which is cool. Thanks.